Royal Court Festival in October and November of 1970 called Come Together was the brainchild of the artistic director, William Gaskell, who threw open the doors in Sloane Square to showcase the work of new companies and help them build a bridge to the establishment outlets. The festival ran for 20 days and nights in the main auditorium and the upstairs studio. The main auditorium was completely reconfigured, as were the expectations of an audience that might not have ventured into the extreme fringes of the avant-garde at that time. The American composer, John Cage, ran a musical evening made up of strange, incomprehensible, guttural noises. A performance artist, a rarity in those days, climbed to the top of a scaffold structure and vomited into the auditorium below. Chickens were let loose in the stalls. A high priestess of happenings administered the last rites to a dead fish in a large coffin. And personnel from the People Show accosted the public on the street outside and accompanied them into the nearby telephone booth where they offered them dirty photos. Not all the program was as deliberately provocative or interventionist. Peter Cheeseman's Stoke-on-Trent company was the sole regional theatre representative with Peter Turson's 1861 Whitby lifeboat disaster, a documentary drama that could have served as a template for all the documentary dramas to come later. Gaskell himself directed three Beckett short plays in the theatre upstairs. David Hare directed Howard Brenton's powerful and disturbing Christie in Love for Portable Theatre. And Nicholas Wright directed Hethcote Williams' landmark ACDC. Many of the practitioners in Come Together represented the new London underground culture that lay beneath the seismic upheavals in the arts and society of that time. Campbell was soon to be at its epicentre, and for him, as for many, Hethcote Williams became both a symbolic genius and a talismanic comrade in arms. Another key influence on Campbell was also part of Come Together. Keith Johnston's theatre machine, which had been formed at the Royal Court as early as 1962 to investigate comedy and mask work, and had evolved techniques that were already in widespread use in education everywhere, created an evening of improvisation based on suggestions and prompts from the audience. Johnston's actors were rigidly trained in a post-Commedia dell'arte style, which allowed them maximum physical freedom to cope with unpredictable material content. It was this serious application of essentially traditional methods of clowning, which embraced silent movies, The Goon Show and The Marx Brothers, that appealed to Campbell, an appeal that is evident in all his subsequent work, right through to his final phase with the new improvisation crowd. <laughs> 